No, we are going to play right on here. So I'll give you a second to get your homework written down and everything else. Get your Chromebook logged in and go ahead and go to Schoology. And then, well, you don't even have to go to Schoology if you know how to log into the ebook easily. We're going into the CPM ebook to use the tool that's in 3.2.5. So here's what you need to do. You need to get in the ebook to 3.2.5, and in the first problem, in the tug of war problem, you want to click on the tug of war e game. So I got to put your homework up on the board. Give it, just log into the Chromebook. We'll give you guys a second. Log into the Chromebook, and you're good. Log into the Chromebook and get to the ebook. For seventh grade, that's it. That's all you need to do. Log into the Chromebook, get to the seventh grade. So, in the ebook, navigate to 3.2.5. Stick up your hand if you need some help. In the ebook, navigate to 3.2.5. I can open another card too if you need. So again, with the ebook, you're clicking login with Google. Remember, my Math 7 page has the picture, so keep calling Math on. You can reorder your classes right now if you want. If somehow you have made it to this point without my access code to Schoology, if for some reason you're not part of the Schoology page yet, is right in here. You need to register for the class, please use that code right now. We only need one from the Go to materials, and click on the ebook. Then when you leave this page, I'm clicking that again. Actually, you can play three people on one player board. You three can't go play. It's just easier to play. All right, are we all where we need to be? How is that computer goofed up? You might need to open that with Kurt. Not for CPM. Well, if they've never, we did this in class. You might have been sick. Um. Is anyone having issues getting into the class? If so, H eight seven P six. H eight seven P six. This is not for if you're in the ebook, you're fine. Most of us are in the ebook. 
couple people were not there. All right. Is everyone here? And if you're not here, raise a hand. You need to click on, right here, in your lesson, in 378, click on Tug of War Eating. Now, if you can't find how to get here, raise your hand. Wonderful. Here's how this game works. So, Mr. Smith and I are going to play each other. Mr. Smith, what's your favorite color? Uh, I'm feeling blue. Feeling blue. You're feeling blue. I'm sorry. And I'm going to be green because that was um, call of opportunity. So, look at the rules of the game. So, we place both of our markers at zero. Now, you're not doing anything right now. I just need you to watch and listen. So, hands off computers. Hands off computers. Hands off computers. I just say things three times. It's a middle school. All right. Then, spin both spinners. This was confusion the first time I ever played through this game with people, so I'm going to go real slow with this. You decide what operation you're going to use to combine the values, and we write this out. So if you don't have your um, toolkit or math journal or something to write in right now, please get that out. If your move makes you go off the board, you go back to zero. If your move makes you go off the board, you're going to go back to zero. Now, how do I move right or left? Positive or negative. So a negative three would say move three spaces left in the negative direction. Positive would be three spaces right in the positive direction. So if Mr. Smith and I were going to play, let's say I go first. I spin this spinner and spin that spinner. You just click with the spinner. This is on one, just barely, a negative one. So what happens if I add one and negative one? Zero, and I don't move. So I could multiply them, or I could subtract them. What's one minus a negative one? Two, and I will win if I make it to 11, so I would rather move two on my paper. And this is what people struggle with. I'm starting at zero, and then I got a one, which I'm going to subtract with the other number I got. This operation can be anything you want. It can be add, subtract, multiply, divide. So you have to combine these somehow. That's going to land me where? at 2, because this really is addition, and 1 plus 1 is 2, 0 plus 2, I land at 2, so I grab my marker and move it to 2. Now, Mr. Smith spins both spinners, and he has to decide what operation he wants to use. Negative 3, negative 2. Well, I think I will choose to multiply. So he's starting at zero, adding a move of the product of his two numbers. The product is six. Zero plus six makes it. Work. Who's closer to winning right now? Mr. Smith. However, if he goes off the board, if he goes beyond 15, you reset to zero. Now, this is where people still struggle. Because I'm now at two, when I spin again, and then we're going to let you play. This one is kind of stuck. Negative four and zero. Well, I don't want to multiply those. That would be bad. I can't divide, because otherwise I could get zero if I do zero. So I can either add or subtract. If I do two, because that's where I'm starting now, plus my move I'm going to put my zero first and say zero minus negative four. What's minus negative four? What? Because it's the opposite of negative four. So this is four. Where will I land? Six. Because my move makes four. It becomes positive. So I now land at six. I'm going to tie this, Mr. Smith. And if you put it on top, that you sometimes have to drag one off to get to the other one. So you can set it below if you want. Any questions right now?
we're going to play this at least for 10 minutes. Probably going to be longer. You have to be writing this down. I have an activity that is less fun than this, and if you were trying to take the shortcut and write nothing down, you're going to get redirected to a different activity. So please follow the rules. Write down your shifts as you go. You're trying to land on 11. That's where we're trying to get. Or negative 11. Because if you shift in the negative direction, you still have the opportunity to win. Questions? Wonderful. Happy playing. Tell me once you, if somebody wins on the house. Now there's a mystery. Weird. I'm only doing my own. Hey, so Mr. Smith just won. He just hit the spinners again. He got negative three and two. How can he use negative three and two to get him to win? Should he add them together? Subtract them. If he does two minus negative three, what's that make? Five. He moves five from six. To land on 11 and Mr. Smith wins. Everybody's first expression should start with zero plus. We all start at zero. So zero plus. See a closed pool. So how do we want to do Well, good. Alright, make sure we're writing stuff down. Curry, how are we doing? Are we good? We write stuff down? Write down our move. Zero plus something. So you, so you get multiply those, that means negative 9, so that's a negative 9. Then 3 minus 1 is 2, negative 9 minus 2 to take you down 2 more, and you. Attention! This is more important than what you're doing right now. These people are unpaid for turkey bowls. Polentino, Campbell, Curry, Dunn, Ian. Hayhurst, Hopkins, Kundu, Kundu, La Rochelle, Lindemeyer, and Marty. So if you are them or friends with them, tell them to pay so we get to all of them. Oh, you can do it now if you want to. Okay, yeah, just going to do it right now. So here's what's up. If you're one of those people and you think your parents pay, you have my explicit permission to go and text them right now if you want. You have my, like, if you're concerned, because Grant, I see your concern, you think your parents paid, you have my permission to go and do that. So if you just lost your partner, jump in with two other people. Like, and you can put your marker where it was. Just grab Wait, what are they you weren't on what Hopkins was on, but you were on that list. Yeah. Your name got read as not paid for bowls. Okay. Yeah, I know. You're aware of this. Yes. You need to pay by midnight tonight. Okay. You have cash with you. You drop it in the office. Your parents can drop it off. You can have cash with you. Uh, okay, you're like reaching your pocket. Or your parents can pay online. And they can call them tonight and be like, hey, I'm going to bowl on this day. And eat lunch for the day. You have to pay for like three plus hours. People normally get tired and stop. But it's really fun. Your parents pay eight dollars. You look frustrated. What's going on? You look frustrated. So, what you were like, I don't know. Are you guys okay? Yes. Anyone winning it? No? Yeah, you My Thank you. 
So we have what negative four and one. Since you're working in the negative direction, and you're now at negative eight, what further do you need to get to the way of starting? Three more negatives. When you lose the numbers, you just got to make a negative one. So you can win right now if you do the right operation. So what we're going to write there is start with negative eight. So that's what we're to write negative eight first. Then plus and open a parentheses to say what shift we're going to do. How are you going to make negative eight? Negative eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. Yeah, you either do one plus negative four or negative four plus one. Either way, that gets you negative three. So if that's what you want to put in front of you, that one plus negative four or negative four plus one. Who has won so far? I know Allie just won her game. Who's won? Anyone? No, I got it. Keep going. You're, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. she uses? Does it matter what operation you use to combine numbers? I heard somebody say, uh-uh. If I spun, let's say negative three and a two, right? Negative three and two. What would I get if I added these? 
Negative 3 plus a positive 2. Negative 1. Somebody said it. My negative is stronger, right? I get negative 1. What would I get if I multiply these? Negative 6. What would I get if I subtract these? Shout it out. Negative 5. And what would I get if I divide these? Patrick, what do you get when you divide 3 by 2? Yeah, and that I can't even use, right? Patrick called me over and he's like, wait, I got a half answer. I'm like, well, is the winning spot on a half space? And he's like, I don't know. So we can't even use, but look at the four different answers I'm able to get, depending on the operations. Your sheet that you have, your resource page for this chapter, well, one of them, has this game on the back. All you got to do to play this on your own is take a paper clip, stab it through there, and use the paper clip as your spinner. So you guys can play this game on your own if you want. I will help you make a little like homemade spinner if you want. You just need a paper clip or anything. A bobby pin will work too. Girls, if you have a bobby pin, will work really well. Um, so big point here is I big point that I think we all got. Which operation you use to combine your values obviously matters, right? The operation makes a big difference. So let's close our Chromebooks, please. You can stick them on the floor if you want, or yeah, yeah those are normal. Yeah. yeah, so log on. Yeah, yeah. However, you guys want to do that. I'm not going to use the Chromebooks. No. And you need out whatever you're taking notes in today. Cynthia, Devin, Gavin, and Mark are playing tug of war. Okay, so Cynthia. I think it'd be too awkward. Actually, whispering is harder on your voice, too, just so you know. Whispering is bad for your vocal cords. Cynthia, yeah, so if your voice hurts, don't whisper. Cynthia begins her turn with a marker at 15. So if she starts at 15, and we're going to document this out, go ahead and write a 15, because she starts at 15, and then she's going to move, so we can go ahead and say a 15 plus. Now, Cynthia is almost going to lose if she runs off the board and have to restart at zero. This is not good. She spins a one and a three. Sorry, one and a negative three. For Cynthia to not lose, you probably use the place today. For Cynthia to not lose, what must be true about the number that she makes? Like the shift that she makes. For her to not immediately lose. Marvin? She has to go negative, right? She needs to go down the number line because if she goes up, she loses and has to go back to zero. So she thinks that she might be able to get to the winner space, which since she's on the positive end would be at positive 11. So, oh, I was going to use cards, but I just can't resist your hand. So, we think, what if I use a pen instead of a highlighter? What if I do negative 3 minus 1? What is that? Yeah, a couple people are saying it out loud. It's like, negative 4. So, if we do 15 plus, and I subtract those values, we know this in the parentheses is negative 3. Negative 4. Where does negative 4 land me when I add it to my 15? Anyway. 11. 11, and she wins. Righteous. So go ahead and write that down. The 15 plus the negative 3 minus 1, and she wins. Then try to process Devons as your team and write out the expression that would represent that. You can do B, C, and D on your own. We'll give you a couple minutes to work on this. Kind of of my screen screenshot, so it throws it up top.
Kevin can win. He is able to win on this spin. You need to figure out how. He is able to win. Then move on. If you're done with B, move on to C. So for each of these, we're wanting to write where we are to start and add some kind of shift. Now, if my shift is negative, obviously adding negative will push me to that. But Zoe, I shuffle a lot today, sorry guys. If people haven't been called, you can let me know if you're really like upset. I shuffled and I probably shouldn't have, so I'll try to run through the whole deck. So I'll start over on Monday. But Zoe in B. We said Devin can win. Do you know what he does with his numbers to make him win? Why? What do we get when we multiply them? So what is negative 3 times 4? 12. Negative, right? Negative 12. Because we have one negative and one positive. So 1 plus a negative 12 lands me at negative 11. That's how Devin wins. He makes the product negative 12, what do you mean? The product is negative 12. And he uses that to get him to negative 11. Please make sure you have that expression written. Sorry that I kind of ran out of space. In... Penelope. And C. Do you think Gavin can win? Alex thinks so. What do we do with the negative 3 and the 2 to get Gavin to win? Yeah, which order? Am I negative 3 first or am I negative 2 first? So if I do negative 3 minus negative 2. What's minus a negative? Plus a positive. So this is really addition. Negative 3 plus 2 is what? Negative 1. What's 12 plus negative 1? 11. And Gavin wins the game. Mark Grant, can you help me with Mark? He starts at negative 14. Do you think he can win? Um, so think, what does he need to do to get to, let's say, negative 11? What would he need? Minus 3? So it, the move he needs to do is to the right. Right, if he's at negative 14, he needs to go positive how far? He needs to go right three, positive three. Oh, multiply! Negative times negative makes positive. Negative 14 plus three, negative 11. And pregunta. By the end of the series, you should at least know preguntas. It's a fun word. Grrr! Alright, move on to 81. Check it out. I need to capture this. So I, my screen won't work to like click this.
What are you doing, get angry? Who drew up Winnie the Pill? What? Nobody, Winnie the Pill? T I double jet O. Oh, oh my god! TTF and Top Top Channel. Alright, so in 81, Roger went Roger went home to play the tug of war game with his older brother Hank, and Hank got really excited. Yeah, a math game! So Hank looked at the spinners and thought for a bit, and then told Roger that the game is flawed. Dum -dum -dum. You cannot get all integers from negative 10 to 10. Hmm. Roger wondered if Hank was right. So are there any integers from negative 10 to positive 10 that you cannot get using any of the operations with the results of each spin. So this is saying if we spin each spin and do an operation to combine them, is there any number that can't be used? Play with this for a minute. We have five minutes of class left. I'm curious if we can come to an answer. Is there any value, any integer from negative 10 to 10 that cannot be formed with the numbers on the screen? Yeah, you, well, I'll, I'll put them back up, but you don't really need to spin them. You can just think of any combinations. So there's your spinners right there. Your spinners up on the TV. Yeah, using those numbers, like we were playing in the game, can we form, like with those operations, all of our integer values? In your face. Whoa, be nice. <laughs> yeah, that's an operation. Alright, I need help. I always need help. More help than most people can give. Now! Now! How there are often multiple ways to get these values. So if I write up here what you did not think of, that doesn't mean yours is wrong. There's multiple ways to get these. Can I make a negative 10? How? What of the, like, what spinner result would get me negative 10? Somebody said, yeah. Do I have factors of 10 up there? Do I have a, a 5 and a 2 or a 10 and a 2? I have 2, but I don't have a 5. Can I add any of those numbers to make 10? Okay, so I'm going to leave this as a question mark. And a couple of you I know will keep processing through it, trying to make it. We'll come back to that. What about negative 9? How? Negative 3 times 3, I like putting the negative first because then I don't have to put it in parentheses. It's nice if you do, but you don't have to. Negative 8. If you know it, just, yeah, just give it to me. Negative 4 times 2. Negative 7. Mm, can we get that? Oh, they're on the same spinner. So we couldn't get negative 3 and negative 4. Can I make negative 7? That'd be negative 12. It's got the multiplication. But 
that would give us negative 1. Ah, negative 4 minus the 3 from the other spinner. Because you're right, we need a negative 4 and a negative 3, but if we don't have a negative 3, we make it with subtraction. Negative 6. Yes? 3 times negative 2. And there's a couple ways to get that one. Negative 5. Negative 4. Negative 3. And there's a few ways to get that. We can add and different things. Negative 2. Yeah, those are easy. Negative 1. Yeah, we'll be able to get that. These, these middle guys are kind of easier. What about 3? Yeah, we have a positive 1 and a positive 3. 4. A negative times a negative. Negative 2 times negative 2. Positive 5. You got it, Alan. How do I get there, though? You said 3, right? The only positive 3 I have is here. What number from the other spinner do I want to use? The negative 2, but how do I want to use it? Sorry, we start with 3, right? You said use 3. And then I can use negative 2. How? You subtract right there. Minus a negative is addition. That adds. That will make 5. What about 6? There's a couple different ways to make it. We could do the easiest one that we see really is negative 3 times negative 2. 7, positive 7. There is a way to do this. What if we grab the 3 first? From the right spinner. What number do we use? Subtract the negative 4. If you want to make a negative positive, just subtract it. Subtracting the negative is like addition of a positive. You know, 8? 8, how do we make it? Yeah, negative 4 times negative 2. Nine? Mm. One's negative, one's positive. I don't know that we can make nine. What about positive ten? Uh, I don't know that we can make positive ten. You know, Hank might be right. Gosh darn it, those older brothers. Darn. Alright, please try the homework. Check your answers in Schoology. Let me know if we need to go over things. Check answers in Schoology. And have a wonderful weekend. Tomorrow's weather is supposed to be decent. Tonight's going to be nice. Too. It's going to be like 60 and just like mild. Yeah, I'm thinking about having a campfire tonight.